different things. Well, we'll see what happens in our first draft of this series as Phoenix One will start on blue. FlyQuest, of course, on the red. Shen and MF there from Phoenix One, so very targeted bands to start things off. FlyQuest start things off as expected, Camille Rengar, but we'll see if they also finally lock in LeBlanc as that third and final ban. Yeah, I think with two out of three done, they are going to actually do it for the first time this season. So funny enough, the first that we're talking about it, but um, it likely will be the LeBlanc going through here, unless they want to try to make a trade of Kha'Zix for LeBlanc or Varus for LeBlanc, this sort of thing. So you do still have the option of leaving that open and looking for a trade. I you know, what this can signify is simply that there's a shift in priorities on the champion. Could be. We'll see what happens here because it looks like Lemon and the yeah, Notebooks are going to actually ban away Jace from Zig. Okay. So FlyQuest, they hold to form. They are willing to make a trade here. And P1 first pick Varus. So Varus is massive priority. But now if you look at what the second round draft could be, theoretically you could get both Kha'Zix and LeBlanc as your first two picks. And that's pretty disgusting. Uh, FlyQuest may have their own opinions on which way they want to go with that. But I would not be surprised at all to see the Kha'Zix-LeBlanc uh, duo locked in here. There it is. Yep. It just seems so straightforward and FlyQuest do exactly that nice with their track. picks. And this is the FlyQuest drafting style. Give away one of the picks or be willing to give one away and make a powerful trade. Usually you expect LeBlanc to go over to Phoenix 1 in this case. They don't take it and FlyQuest snap up two incredible picks. Yeah, it really is. And, and Jace is not a bad ban. This is not a wasted ban. That's a zig targeted thing. So I honestly think this is a bit of a coup. They, they pulled off quite a nice first round. We'll have to attract what the rest of the picks are going to be. Uh, Rise will be the matchup into LeBlanc for the mid lane. Uh, Ryu, very strong on this champion. One of the guys who I think uses the Realm Warp better than, than the majority of players do. He's really proactive with it, likes to pair up with the Nori, use the Realm Warp to help invade, bully out the other jungler, and also really uses it a lot to go bot lane and kind of uh, look to set up 4v2s there. Well, you can see Rise is picked there for Ryu, of course, and looks like maybe a support. Adrian going to go with the Zyra here. And again, we talk about FlyQuest getting strong picks. These are also not bad picks on Phoenix One side. They're really good, and they're just not the draft parity. So certain roles are going to be targeted. Inori did not get to pick his champion. Uh, Rengar is already off the table. Kha'Zix is already off the table. I'm expecting FlyQuest uh, to be able to target bans on Inori going into the second phase. We may see them match supports, but they're not going to. So there's, there's a lot of difference here. We see that uh, it's top leaner for FlyQuest and there's no jungler uh, for the other team. So it's it's no one in the bot lane drafted for FlyQuest. And, and usually it's only one role that is kind of the difference. Mm -hmm. uh, so now there is a lot of options. They're not actually going to pinch Inori. That's interesting. Well, they kind of want to continue to okay, make Balls' lane good. They've already yeah. banned the Jace. They're going to ban another bully there in Rumble, which we did see Zig play last week. We'll see what Phoenix 1 decide there, because FlyQuest have left themselves pretty wide open with a dual lane, you can pick a lot of different champions. Phoenix One going to start with a support here, banning away Malzahar. Now, if you ban out the Rumble, the Rumble and the Jace are the two DPS top laners that Zig has shown. Um, you know, he, he obviously is able to play other ones. We just haven't seen them yet. It'll be interesting to see if they are going to try to target something like a Fiora or a Gangplank, which could be a DPS matchup that wouldn't be bad into the Maokai, or if they're going to pivot and try to take off another jungler who is kind of that high tier. You know, we have seen Ivern kind of settling into that role. Uh, Graves is another one that is pretty high priority, and I think that fits Inori's playstyle a little bit better, so that, that is a pretty intelligent ban. Well, 20 seconds for Phoenix One's final ban here. It's been a very tense ban phase two, in fact. We'll see if P1, do they continue just picking on supports and making that support v support matchup better for Adrian, who already has the powerful Zyra. They're going to ban away, I guess, the other thing, which is take one of the AD carries away, given that they've already picked one of theirs, and actually yeah banning Ash for themselves. And there's actually a triple AD carry ban, and the MF could be thought of as that support ban, and obviously taking away one of the things that works well into Zyra is going to be pretty strong, but uh, both the bot lane picks have to come through here for FlyQuest. We could see Caitlyn, we could see Ezreal. Uh, I do think that the Caitlyn's laning phase is kind of stronger. Ooh. Pretty, pretty passive though. Gragas. I haven't seen him in a while. Top lane Gragas. Oh, of course, because there's yeah. a Rexa. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, top lane Gragas, we actually saw um, this played, I want to say, I want to say Hooney played it, um, but we have seen it played in the LCK pretty recently. Uh, it does work out pretty well. It's kind of a throwback to the old Gragas. Gragas did get some buffs now, and you kind of can play him as that uh, tanky, bruiser, playmaker type guy. Uh, he does match up fairly well against the Maokai and does have very high playmaking potential. Uh, that said, these are not easy carries to kind of knock in for the Gragas. You have an Ezreal, you have a LeBlanc. These guys are very evasive, very, very quick. They're harder to catch, and you know, having the Gragas against something like a Jin or a Varus would be a lot more threatening, in my opinion. Those are guys who are 
not going to be able to avoid those no. ults nearly as easily. So much mobility, good protection and shielding as well from Lemonation's Karma, which was his support pick here. So kind of an interesting navigation of the back half of this draft in particular. But it's this is one of the nice things I like about the system is that, yes, you can target a rollout and ban a lot of different champions. FlyQuest put a lot of... Uh, their investment in this draft into giving balls a good top lane matchup. And Zig's like, that's fine, I got another tank that you guys haven't seen yet. I mean, it's been seeing some play in the Gragas, but people have to keep reaching deeper into their pockets and find new champions. And Gragas is yet another champion that's maybe going to start to see more play if top lane's continually being targeted. And, and even if, if Zig is very comfortable on this champion, He's not on a DPS champion that should be able to smash their matchup, right? Tank versus tank, Ball should be able to hold his own, should be fine there. They're not going to be as worried about something like the Gragas or the Nautilus or whatever. Um, this is the first Gragas pick in North America, yes. this split, though. So that is something to track how it performs. You know, is this really going to perform better than something like the Nautilus that was left open or the Poppy? Because I don't see the immobile carries that are going to be as, as easy to pick off. It's not that you can't still alt in a LeBlanc or whatever. It's just not as easy to kind of get that perfect setup. Feels like one of the nice things about last picking Ezreal for Altec is that, okay, they see maybe a threat in Gragas like, mm -hmm. going away from maybe a less mobile carry. We know Altec likes his hyper carries. He's going to split the difference kind of with Ezreal here. As we are onto Summoner's Rift for game one between Phoenix One and FlyQuest. Lots to look for here in the first game. And like you've said, both top four teams, both want to keep winning. This is going to be a tough one. I think a lot of what you're going to want to track is just kind of where the early picks went for both teams, right? First rounded, a very strong AD carry in support for P1. Is their bot lane going to be able to get a big advantage? Because as far as pick priority, they did get that. And all of P1 is actually sneaking into the bush here. Gragas is fantastic at these level one ganks. You level body slam first. They're going to probably go for this if they spotted them moving to the bush. Oh, yeah. Okay, they're okay. Good slow from Lemon. Yeah. Bit of damage there. Does get some money as well from the Spell Thieves. Arrow flies an arrow out from at to Lemon, but does do a bit of damage. Nothing too crazy there. It looks like Ryu's no. just kind of holding the fort on the left side, just next to his mid lane. And the trade here is that Balls can then walk in scot free, get a ward on the opponent's blue, and try to track. Uh, that buff start, but Zig is going to exchange another ward over there. So both sides will be able to track relatively where the junglers are starting unless they're doing something super tricky. Yep, and like you said for P1, bottom lane focus given their draft priority. On the other side for FlyQuest, does feel like Moon, who's had consistently strong games, but like we've said, FlyQuest opponents have maybe not been the best given how the league has shaped up so far. Yeah. He's on Kha'Zix, he's set up to have a really strong carry performance, particularly versus a tank. And LeBlanc is a champion that High has beaten, but I don't think he's played yet this season. Mm -hmm. He needs to perform on uh, what is uh, such a high priority champion. He really does, and it's gonna be a lot about the mid and jungle duo here uh, for for FlyQuest. I think a lot of focus is gonna be put on the top half of the map. If, you know, if High and Moon can get ahead, they can use that to extend an advantage for balls. And also Maokai is, incredible with gank assist, so Moon can try to target that side too, because generally speaking, the Kha'Zix should have priority over the Rek'Sai in most ganks in the early game, so you're going to have to look for the success to be there. Ooh, Altec actually looking for it. Level 1 all in, as Altec almost takes a little too much damage. No heal burnt there, and looks like just exhaust traded from the support, so good little cue there from Altec threads in onto Arrow, but that's really aggressive. Yeah, they're trying to get the push here. Uh, you can see Lemon Nation is using his Qs on the backline range minions, be able to push in this wave very, very fast. They're going to get a faster level two. Uh, so Arrow and P1 are going to have to be careful about that. And really nice trading, aggressive pushing here from Lemonation and Altec. This is a good way to circumvent some of the weaknesses of their lane. Because if you get pushed in by the Zyra and the Varus, you will get poked out under your turret. But if you're able to be really aggressive, if Lemonation can maintain bush control, you take away a lot of their priority. And this is going to help here. Moon actually invading towards Inori's red buff. Isn't going to find it. So we're going to get some information there. Bop himself over the wall with the Blast Cone and continue jungling on his side here, moving towards that Gromp. Lemon Nation again, still posturing aggressively, managing to get poked down onto Adrian. Great. And Zyra, like you said, when you can't move forward in this lane, get the plants push and get the poke down. It does get tricky despite how strong the dual lane is here from P1. This is just excellent play from FlyQuest, kind of circumventing some of the weaknesses of their lane uh, through their strategy, through the manipulation of the waves. They're pushing in their opponents, and you can see Adrian is kind of somewhat healthy now, but he has no potions remaining. So, you know, that does lie to you a little bit. And if he takes much more poke whatsoever, uh, he's going to have to base or, or risk getting all in. He doesn't have that exhaust. And I kind of like that overall explanation of 
FlyQuest are a team that likes to circumvent weaknesses with just smart play. That's kind of their big picture, and it's nice to see it reflected here in the small things in bottom lane. It's been really fun to hear about Lemon Nation and his resurgence in uh, in the league, and, and as a player, you know, you hear a lot about him coming up with unique picks and having a lot of fun with the game, just thinking about cool strategies and ways to win the game and ways to get advantages, and that's always been kind of one of his passions, you know, the whole birth of, the, of Lemon's Notebook, right, is that he loved to find unique ways to play the game, things that other people weren't doing that would give his team a small edge, and he's always been such a smart player, and I think this is just another example of that. I think so. As top lane, Ball's actually getting a bit of a solo lead here, which looks nice. Moon is on that side of the map right now. Balls are just busy pushing this lane in, though. Looks like Moon's going to go back to jungling. High's actually recalling. Also has a big CS lead. Going to go get his first items as well. So this is a little bit subtle, but Zig is actually trying to contest the wave so heavily there so that it wouldn't hard bounce and push back to his opponent, uh, opening up for uh, that gank opportunity. That's why he was trying to hold the wave and he gave up a lot of his health to do it. Unfortunately for him, uh, he will end up having that wave bounce regardless and is going to have to base. So, you know, the wave is going to shove towards his opponent, and that is when Moon could come top lane and, and look for an early gank. Looks like Moon's going back for now, but Ball did teleport back to land. Zig, second Doran's control wards and potions, and a non magic mantle, so also will TP himself into the lane. But like you said, look for Moon to maybe go for a visit. He's got the Warhammer built up now, so plenty of damage, and Maka's got great gank assist as well. Yeah, he certainly does. And because the minions are closer to Zig's side, uh, they will bunch up faster, they will kill off those range minions, and that's kind of an easy way to track. Uh, Zig, as far as itemization goes, when you're playing against the Maokai, you can very easily just build into an early Spirit Visage. It works incredibly well against the Maokai, obviously, because you do have the magic resist, but also because of Gragas' passive, where every time he casts a spell, he gets healed. Uh, and that was actually recently buffed, uh, how much it does get healed. So once you hit that Spirit Visage, if the Maokai isn't massively ahead, you can essentially ignore him. Yeah, it seems like things are starting to even out a bit as well. Instead, Ball shoves the wave in and gets a ward down for some extra information around P1's blue grump in a section. High level six, looking for Ryu. Damage is there, but Ryu's firing back. Adrian's here, though, looking for that roam, but High distorts back to safety. Has that mobility on the LeBlanc and is really taking the initiative here up a fair bit of CS, and Balls has made the roam. This one does not look like it's going to pay off, but I think it's a smart roam from Balls. Since he knows the wave is shoving to him, he's not going to lose much as long as he gets back to his turret uh, before anything happens. Lemon's here as well. Adrian is so squishy at level 3 high. He wants to do a mid but he gets knocked up. Ryu still doing damage, but Anori goes down. First spot to high. He does die to Ryu, but that's another kill for FlyQuest. Ryu onto Moon now as Lemon. And Altec's now going to collapse. Ryu forced to flash away, but Altec follows. Wants to keep going. W is there. Needs a glass little Q. Auto is in, and Moon wants it. He leaps in for the kill. Nice play from FlyQuest. Good collapse there. They have the jungle priority. They know their lanes are in a good position to make that roam, and they're able to fully commit to the fight because of it. It was super close to High actually going down to give up first blood to the other team, but he does pick it up and will start that snowball on the Blanc. Yeah, 1,500 gold up for FlyQuest already as a well. watch this exchange again. Yeah, and you can track where the members are. So Hai is going to be first to get here. Ezreal's already moving. He can come as well. So they know they can fully commit to this fight. And look how close that was. The level up there does save him. And, and Moon able to pick up another kill. And then Ryu is, is so isolated. It's not much he can really do to fight back. And all of FlyQuest flashing in, committing to getting this, and Alltech tanks up the turret, is going to use that heal, allowing Moon to go in and pick up yet another kill. Really smart stuff from FlyQuest. They'll find themselves an early lead. Three went up in kills now. They've got a nice little boost of gold in their pockets. High back in onto oh, Ryu. Ryu. Chain's going to land. He's going to try and combo it in. Ryu stands his ground, but he got chained gone. again. That's going to be a kill. High gets a solo kill. Beautiful stuff from High, and the ball is going to start rolling. LeBlanc has insane kill pressure because of that chains combo. You can simply lock someone down for such a long time. Ryu, without the summoners, can't really turn and fight back. High lands one chain that allows him to land the second with his ultimate, and it's all downhill from there. The problem used to be that LeBlanc killed you too quickly because of how good her burst was. Well, we delayed some of that burst, and now she just kills you a little slowly. Oh, she still kills you quick, <laughs> but there is a little bit of delay there. Uh, without the summoners, Ryu had no chance to fight back, and, and that is just such bad news uh, for P1. You know, especially because Hai had such an aggressive buy. He didn't purchase any potions whatsoever. So if this lane kind of got into a poke back and forth, uh, Hai could have actually been at a disadvantage despite the gold lead, uh, since Ryu had more sustain with the catalyst and the extra potions. But because Hai came back immediately all in, it does not matter that he didn't have that sustain. So he gets the kill and extends that lead and 
you know, Ty and Moon off to the races. This is what they needed to succeed. And this is kind of what we've seen from them. They've continually done this, and Moon even stole away the blue buff from Ryu. So insult getting added to injury as Moon. Still in. Oh, Blue for Ryu. Chain so there smart. again. Ryu trying to run up away. He just can't get out at all. Moon, does he want it? I think Kai wants it instead. Healing from Aaron's going to save him. Double knock up for the Rek'Sai and P1. Turn it around. Oh, 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 the turnaround. Moon, I think he actually leveled his W first for that gank. He goes in with the ultimate to land that 80% slow. The isolation's slow. But they just barely don't kill off Ryu. And all the P1 was roaming back up. They needed that kill. They could not allow... Uh, this snowball to get going and double buffs over to arrow is going to help them as well as two kills. So watch this once more. Moon has evolved uh, his W. He jumps forward. He hits the isolated slow. Easy route here from high. They stop that realm warp. But in comes Adrian. Lands that route onto onto both of them actually. And then a double knock up and the heal coming in from arrow. Arrow is going to be massive now. He's pretty much even in CS. Made the roam. Got two kills. Really strong stuff there. You can see Arrow's Varus record. Awfully good. He's been, I think, the best Varus in the league. one and 7.1. That's nice. <laughs> See if he can get that K to get even higher as high. He's going to use that ulti, and p one's not particularly scared. I can kind of still see the real high in mid lane. He'll collapse this tunnel and maybe look to get on the offensive. Start some roam pressure here. Looks like he's got a blue buff to also take. And, I mean, things are definitely going well here for FlyQuest mid laner, but oh, yeah. high not getting off that next kill. I think they tried to donate it over to LeBlanc to really keep the snowball going. Cost themselves there in a nice room up from uh, P1. And now we'll see if Pi can continue to push the lane, apply pressure, and do what he does best. Leave the lane and affect solo lanes with some runs. And, and you also have to remember that the W first is going to change things as far as the strength for Moon quite a bit. His dueling power should actually be quite a bit lower because you do not have the reset on your Q, but LeBlanc making the roam up here. If Zig can't get out... He's got Flash. High's going to try and chain him up. Gets in, lands the first chain. High, not going to go in for it. Just yeah. a bit of poke back. A smart ulti out there, the disengage for Zig, knocking the Maokai away so he can body slam out. He didn't want to get body blocked on that. Um, but yeah, Moon won't have the evolved claws, so his 1v1 isolated power is lower. Uh, his poke power, his wave clear, that is obviously higher. And it does allow you an easy way to participate in the team fights. So just kind of spamming out that W and looking for poke from the side. But it's a different strength. And the question also comes, what do you level up second then? Do you go for the leap for the resets? Uh, or are you going to get that Q second? And, and likely it will be the Q. Uh, which is going to mean it's a long time until you can possibly have uh, the resets. And that's one of the nice things. Kha'Zix very versatile champion, but you do make trade-offs depending on what order you want to evolve things in. Meanwhile, Ryu does have himself a blue buff. Now two mana items ticking up, so he'll feel good about that. And again, everything just kind of settling down a bit more. FlyQuest still ahead, but they were up approaching 2,000 gold. Now it's flat under 1,000. Yeah, the gold lead's not a big deal right now, especially because a lot of the gold is in the pocket of Arrow, right? And that was kind of the key pick uh, for P1. That was their first pick, and it's on a guy who a lot of people are calling the best AD carry in the league. We've seen how much Varus can take over games with that poke. Uh, when you get a good start and you hit the early lethality, it's pretty disgusting. And Arrow, knowing that he had a, a nice little surge of gold, goes straight for the Ghost Blade, circumventing that tier. He's just going to pick up the tier later, very likely. Uh, this way, he will have much more combat power right now and look to kind of dominate the lane and extend his lead. Well, you can see, again, Ryu is pushing up, trying to stay safe. Does have someone is back and ready, so should feel a little bit better about a potential visit. And Nori, though, actually trying to sneak away this Ocean Drake. Looks like P1 have pretty good coverage of the river in yeah, general, so I don't think Flyquest can really, really make it. Yeah. Lands are pushed in, teleports are up, but no one wants to use them. And Nori should be able to take this safely. Ryu going to join him for a bit of extra DPS, but really nice take there from P1, kind of wrestling control back in the game. Yeah, and a lot of the credit goes to the bot lane for that. I mean, if you look over at the bot lanes, uh, you can see Alltech and Lemonation have been under turret for quite some time. That means Lemonation can't get out to ward. Uh, very easy for Adrian to get some wards in the jungle. Pink wards down. They know they have full vision control because Lemonation hasn't been Ooh. able to get out. Good sidestep there from Ryu. High going in again, but Moon is there. Damage traded onto High, though. High did not land the initial CC. And Ryze was always good in a straight-up fight. Balls and Zig going at it once again. Under turret, though. Oh. Ulti not there for Zig. That travel time, very yeah. different for Greg's players. It, it really is. And, and if you're not experienced with the Gragas, you're not very comfortable with the ultimate, uh, it's one of those spells that can not only not help you, it can actually hurt you. There, I do think, had he timed that a little bit better. He actually hit the body slam on Maokai. Could have knocked him into the turret. It's warping time. Who do they want? They've got elimination. He's absolutely oh. dead. 
Just a CC chain. There's Adrian actually dead from Altec, <laughs> who sniped him on the other side. Moon is here, but the turret's going to fall. P1 getting that first boost of gold. And it's three kills on their AD carry. He's up a thousand gold essentially now on his opponent with that first turret gold, plus all, all of these kills injected into him. He's going to be so, so strong. A lot of it is going to be on the assassins of FlyQuest to shut this guy down when we get to the mid game stages and team fight stages. Yeah, we haven't quite seen everyone group up just yet. There's been a lot of action on the bottom half of the map, but as we're back in top lane, it's been pretty quiet. Balls have been consistently pushing in, but. We'll watch this one again. Arrow just nails this ulti. Yeah, and we, we talked about Ryu, how good he is with these Realm Orbs, pairing up with Inori, goes straight to the bot lane, and Adrian had turret aggro there. Ooh, and kind of stepped back into it. I think he could have he could have lived that one, should have lived that one. He had his flash even, so I uh, took a couple more turret shots than he really needed to. I think just thought he was just out of turret aggro, but wasn't quite, and everyone's made that mistake before. Well, credit on the other side. Stranglethorns is excellent. Actually oh, secured that kill. Lamination. Ah. Oh, not going to steal it. Got to wait. Ryu, <laughs> almost a little too impatient, but does get it. Ball's in trouble, though. 3v1 feels bad. Gonna pop the ulti. Ulti back from Ziggs. Wonderful balls. Twisted advances for a bit of safety, but Arrow gets himself kill number four. They can even give it to Arrow with that ultimate. So great job on the roam to the top side. More and more teams are getting better about these roams, uh, doing them at timings that people aren't necessarily going to expect. This one, to be fair, FlyQuest should have expected as the bot lane turret was already down. And the tier now has been picked up, that delayed tier. But with Ghostblade plus another serrated Dirk, Arrow is off to the races. This guy is going to be a fiend. Alltech now with the complete Triforce. He did not decide to go for the Iceborne Gauntlet. So remember, he won't have extra armor to help deal with that lethality. And that's actually pretty key, as when you can get someone down to zero armor with lethality, you're dealing true damage. So even just that Glacial Shroud uh, from the Iceborne Gauntlet, makes you take massively less damage from a lethality stacker like Arrow. That said, he will have higher DPS to deal with the tanks. See if they can turn this around, Altec. There's that first Q. You can already see max rank Q. Starting to really hurt. He's got the extra serrated deck as well. So Altec knows he just has to dodge a little better. Another thing I've been kind of interested to track is if we see more AD carries going for a GA as their kind of defensive item instead of a Maw instead of the Mercurial, simply because of that extra armor. If you're able to get that, just the Chain Vest from it, you actually take massively less damage. More high lethality. Almost chains up Zig. I'll have to track where Arthek wants to go with his defensive purchases, but it's been almost all aggression so far as High gets himself his next blue buff, Morelli Nomicon's finished for him, but Ryu now with the Rod of Ages has kind of gone through the rough patch that his lane yeah. was under with Moon giving it so much attention. In fact, he's leaving the lane very frequently looking to make plays. That's the nice thing about both these champions is that they can get out of lane and roam very effectively. Hai is known for roaming and influencing side lanes on his team, but Ryu, with a mobile champion like Ryze, has kind of been a step ahead in leaving that lane. I mean, the fact of the matter is, with the counter gank from P1 on that kind of second kill that should have snowballed it out of control, really shut that down. And Ryu and Hai, even though Hai has the extra kill, uh, there is a turret down for P1 as, as well as the extra assists. So they're essentially dead even in gold, and there's not really any advantage right now uh, for the LeBlanc anymore, but a lot of people coming up topside. Yeah, defensive teleport actually from Zig is, I think P1 might try and find a collapse here, Moon. Should be safe with his leap. Poke from Elimination is nice as Moon gets himself out of the way, and Blast Cones just to get extra distance in towards his Krog camp. I mean, P1, they're committing a lot to try and take this next turret. I don't think FlyQuest can hold it, though. Balls is here. He's finally walked his way up. He actually did commit teleport, excuse me. Yeah, it's a trade of TPs there, and there are more FlyQuest members topside, Ooh. because most of, of P1 has backed off. Looking for Zig, but he's not the best target. Got his Flash and his ulti up as well. Arrow just continuing to throw poke in, and without the Ocean Drake that P1 got, it's actually kind of tricky for Fly to do too much in some sort of protracted siege and very valuable for P1 to be in this situation for as long as possible. Exactly, because they had Inori farming the jungle while Moon is hanging around there, and because Ryu was able to push waves while their bot lane is pushing in too, so they're getting advantages the longer that FlyQuest stays there and gets nothing. And now they make that close in as they know people have to answer the bot lane wave. They get this turret, very patient play from P1, and they're awarded with another easy turret. Looking clean as well, Fly with a second chain, looking for Ryu, but doesn't want to commit. Ryu pretty strong at this stage as he's going to continue to take a little bit more poke. I mean, they're trading blue buffs, but Ryu shouldn't feel too much on the threat. I believe he also encouraged the Colossus. They didn't quite check the Keystone Mastery, but good defensive mastery for this sort of matchup. That was is popular on Rise before, despite the fact that it's been changed. Exactly. It, it is very popular into the block specifically uh, because you have such 
big trade coming out from the block in a short window. When you throw down that W, especially if you stack it with the EW combo, and then you Q, you get your passive shield from the kit, plus the Courage of Colossus. That can eat up so much of that damage. That in combination with some MR and some HP, uh, makes it pretty hard Big to take you down. Pick on an arrow, not quite high, just can't commit enough to do a full combo. The Ocean Drake is up though, and I think Fly really want to fight for it. P1 would love a second Ocean Drake, and Fly kind of needs to match this. They've already started it though, a steal. It's not forthcoming, does go over. High actually secures it himself, and Fight maybe going to break out here. Balls looking aggressively, but P1 going to charge down mid instead. And Moon actually upgraded his wings second there. So level 11 Kha'Zix doesn't have the evolved Q whatsoever. This may be the, the no evolved Q build. We actually saw this in LPL last night a little bit. Uh, it was the ultimate as that last upgrade, which is which is pretty against the norm, but interested to see if it pops up in the LCS today. We'll check back in at level 16 then for Moon. As P1 up in gold, almost 2,000. It was when they took the top title initially. Drake's being traded as nice, so there's some parity there. But FlyQuest, who are a team that are known for you know, falling a little bit behind in lane. That didn't really happen. They're actually ahead for a yeah. lot of the early stages this time around, but certainly make it up in the mid game, just no matter where the game is. The fact that they're down two turrets to zero means that all of that map play that they're known for, all that teamwork and skirmishing, gonna be much harder to pull off because the map is so much more close for them. Whereas P1, plenty of space to move around, starting to hit some strong item timings, and we're gonna have to hit on it again because Arrow now with Edge of Night completed. Yeah. Oh, he's just getting stronger by the minute. And it's not only the, the massive amount of damage that item puts out, it makes it so much harder for a champion like LeBlanc to actually stop this guy. Because what you can do, and this is my kind of problem with Edge of Night as an item, is you pop Edge of Night and you come up to clear the wave. As soon as you clear the wave, your Edge of Night is still up. You back off and you can essentially hide behind your turret until the next wave comes in. And then Edge of Night is actually off cooldown again. So you can always have a spell shield ready when you have to play aggressively. And that shuts down someone like LeBlanc so much who is combo based. You must land one spell to start the kind of timer on that combo. Then you have to have the second one to trigger. That's how you do your big damage. But if Edge of Night is in there, it's so tough. And, and High is going to have to play well around that. You need every spell you can as High and Ryu still Kind of duking it out here 1v1. High has been sitting in the brush for a little while. I was hoping for a surprise onto Ryu, but instead waiting for his teammates. Rest of P1, though, also in the area. So a big fight could break out here. High again with a flank on a Ryu. Elimination coming down. Ryu chained up again. Moon should be in there, and that's going to be an easy kill. Good patience from High and a nice roam down from the rest of the team. You may not be able to win that straight up 1v1 at this point, but with the lockdown and the team coming in, Ryu didn't even bother blowing Summoners. He knew he was a goner. I think that's the right choice. A good play, though, from FlyQuest. We'll see how much more they can get. They really want to start picking up some of this turret gold, but with Varus there to clear the waves, it's pretty tough. I mean, as far as the gold league goes, it really just is the turret gold. Zig and Balls are fighting it out. I know he's going to make it an unfair fight, though, as Balls gets spread smited. Going to try and hold his ground, but teammates aren't coming for a long time. Knocks them back. Zig gets his knockback, though. Good flash from Balls. Could get him to safety, and Altex here to make sure he's okay. Maokai turns out pretty tanky. Gets out of there. Uh, will be a trade of flashes even, not even just a flash advantage. So Inori's flash is down, and he is one of the primary engagers there for P1 if they do want to fight, but obviously Zig is uh, still going to have his available and can be looking for something. For now, it seems like they're very happy to just have the 1-3-1, one, one, put up Arrow in the mid lane, feed him that farm and experience, allow Ryu to go into the side lanes, where it doesn't feel like High is at a point that he could actually match Ryu in a straight up 1v1. Actually, four-man pressure here from P1. Could see this turret going down. FlyQuest not in position. High's going to lock up a Nori, but he's the tankiest member of the team. Mid turret's going to fall on three turrets to zero. 22 and a half minutes in. P1 off to a great early lead. They really are. And, you know, FlyQuest is okay to give up some of these turrets and stuff. They're not massively behind. But you do have to choose a moment to make a stand, right? You cannot continue to bleed objectives. And they are up a kill still. Uh, but Arrow is getting stronger and stronger as more and more gold has been funneled into him. So they do have to make sure to actually pick their moments. I don't think FlyQuest is the kind of team that would ever roll over and die. No. Uh, they definitely are very proactive. We're just going to have to track when exactly they decide to make their move. I think we have just enough time to kind of explore this a bit more. Because actually one of my favorite things that developed in League, maybe in the last year or two, Everyone says you have this standing gold on the map, right? These turrets that you can try and take. And that's gold that at some point you expect to get because you should be able to take those turrets. And if you kind of look at the gold lead right now, those turrets are really that different. Yep. The problem is expecting to get the gold is not the same as getting the gold. So this situation's fine right now, but if this is still 
zero turrets of flight quest in 10 minutes time, all of a sudden things look a lot worse. Exactly. You, you have to be able to win the fight or get the lane advantages or do something that allows you to then uh, pick up the rest of that gold. Uh, and if you can do that, it's great, right? It's not a big deal whatsoever. But it's not like we have a Fiora here who is eventually going to take his split push advantage. The Maokai is going to be tough for him to actually take down the turrets. Even Hai is not really getting the wave advantages against Ryu. So they must win a fight, essentially, or give something else up somewhere else or wait for P P1 to kind of make a macro mistake. But there's always the opportunity cost to taking down the turrets, too. Even if you just have someone unanswered in a side lane taking down a turret, you may be losing a turret of your own or losing an objective or kills or something. I trying to poke out Ryu, but Inori is keeping his mid laner safe. Looks like Moon's actually going to join in as well, so could start a 2v2 in the top lane here. P1 Ain't certainly... Made it. Fly is certainly a team that likes to fight, so look for them to be aggressive with a lot of these situations. Setting up pretty nicely to try and break down some of these turrets and take their gold, but P1 are playing smart defensively and, and just not biting on a lot of these baits. Moon is going to complete that recall. We'll see where High goes next. And the funny thing about games like this is it's, it's always the, the initiative is kind of in the hands of, of a team like FlyQuest because P1, I think, is very happy to play it slow. They're the ones that are slowly eking out the advantages, so it's always on the losing team to make something happen. Arrow Could caught. Good flash. Very good flash, actually. Yeah, good flash, but still summoner blown, so nicely done by high. And you can see the Edge of Night was off cooldown, so that is kind of a bit of an oopsie there from Arrow to be forward in a position where he could be attacked without the Edge of Night active. And now he has popped it, um, but the use of that of that ability and the use of that item is massive, actually, in staying alive against the Assassin. Ooh, high again, trying to chunk Adrian, actually misses the chain, but still does good damage. Moon, looking for another flank as Arrow uses that ultimate, taking chip damage from Altec. Teams are trying to fight over this Ocean Dragon. FlyQuest got good poke damage done. They definitely did, and, and forcing this Summoner, as well as the ultimate off of Arrow, means he's the strongest member, and he's vulnerable. So they have to be careful about that. High doing a good job zoning. Should be FlyQuest Dragon. Should be, and that's a good one to take. Nicely played. I mean, you see how much poke is on the side of just Varus on P1, so being up in Ocean Drakes is really nice. It is really nice because it helps you to regen that, and it also takes it away uh, from the sieging team, this team with Arrow, who wants to non-stop shoot arrows and poke you out, right? So it's kind of the duality there. You're taking away his mana regen, and you're giving yourself uh, some more HP regen to sustain that poke. So Ocean Drake is actually massive in a matchup like this, where it's very poke-centric, and can even help someone like Altec quite a lot to shore up, you know, if you want to call it a weakness, but not necessarily a weakness, you know, the difference in, in his build for not going Iceborne, not having that armor. He now has a lot of extra regen. Well, as long as he doesn't get completely bursted down, he should be okay. P1, though, still holding on to that. Again, 2,000 gold lead, but it feels like FlyQuest have gotten momentum back here. Arrow, Edge of Night's about to drop off, and FlyQuest are trying to chip down the mid lane turret slowly but surely. But it's going to be a long con here. Altec going to trim our wave in top lane with his ultimate, and FlyQuest, again, just trying to maintain initiative and get something done here. P1 are just trying to make sure they don't make a mistake. Yep, but just track Arrow, see the cooldown on Edge of Night, Track when he actually has to start shooting the wave. Uh -oh, uh -oh, oh, 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 hi! Ouch. That's not it. Now Ryu's going to aggressively roam warp in. Does he find anyone? Arrow and Ryu looking for someone. Ulti's not going to land as Altec uses both his summoners to get away. Five, zero, and zero on the Varus. This is going to be doing a lot of damage. And high. you know, he is going to be pumping out a lot himself. But if he ever gets locked down, he's not running cleanse. He has no QSS. He has no defensive stats. It's a very aggressive build. He's going to get popped. LeBlanc hates nice getting ulti. poke. His good ulti there. Going to alley -oop, balls back in. He gets knocked up by Inori. Knocked back as well with a body slam. Ryu looking to chase in. Can't snare him up. Shield there from Kama. Might keep him alive. He's going to twist to the best. Still oh, up with a sap magic, but finally dies to Ryu. FlyQuest just couldn't defend the top laner. He lived so much longer than I thought he was going to, and if he was able to live another couple seconds, it could have been turned around, but they do get the kill on balls. Summoner's down from him, and P1 is closing in. And this is uh, starting to feel like real problems here for FlyQuest. Losing a tier two turret makes the map even bigger for your opponents and even smaller for you. High looking for Ryu, could be a good pick change. Doesn't latch in another kill onto High. Every CC he hits looks like a kill. As Moon does slay Ryu in the back, but Inori is going to dive back in. Knocks up Lemon Nation, exhaust down. Outside caught by the strangled bonds. Sorry, by the roots. Now knocked up. That should be a kill. Zig does fall as a trade, but P1 just keep getting pickoffs. Arrow barely missing that ultimate, but he's still got arrows to fire away with. Yeah, High wanted that chain so bad onto Ryu, and he's not able to latch. He ends up giving up his life for it. Yes, Moon did get the trade kill, but this is going more and more in the favor of P1 as they're taking full map control. They're picking up kills. 
Uh, and FlyQuest is going to have to work some magic here to get back into this one, I think. Good news for them is that they didn't lose the Tier 2 turret, but they lost a whole lot of their lives as a result. You can see Hai, he sees the opportunity. Yeah, and he's trying to just get that Chain Latch and then get back, but he gets rooted up. He gets exhausted into the Body Slam. Nice chain of CC there uh, from P1, and then Moon goes backline, able to get one kill, but Inori over the wall, and all attack summonerless after that scuffle in the mid lane. Uh, means not much chance for him to get out, but at least he gets a trade kill. I mean, Fly do what they can, defend their structures at the cost of their lives, but falling behind now significantly in gold. P1 up about 4,000, 4,500, and yeah. looking to take retake control of the map. I mean, High has been doing some work. He's continually in side lanes, trying to 1v1 Ryu, but Rise will only get stronger as this game goes on, and Arrow is still the real threat. Six kills. Two assists and not a death to his name. You can see Fly, they started things off so well, but that curve is not looking good. It's definitely not, and a couple thousand of the gold is actually just in the lead on any carries, which is pretty massive. And High has been trying to aggressively make plays, but he started the game with first blood, you know, two and one. He has not been able to get too, too much done since then. They really have effectively stopped him from snowballing. And while he still obviously can get picks at different points in the game, P1's strategy is, is very simply going to be to be a, a grouped up as a squad. And it's very dangerous to go in as LeBlanc into all this CC. If you get hit by any of it, you'll probably die before it ends. You can see Zig able to take the turret solo, finishes off the job that P1 started. Ball can't kill him, but Hai wants another latch, finds a Nori, but he's the tanky one again. Adrian combos in, elimination gonna go down as Arrow goes gone. He wants it. Moon, he's leaping in, they have to kill Arrow, but he flashes out to safety the rest of P1. There to defend, and Moon ate so much poke. You are kidding me! Sniped by Arrow, Moon. Oh. Loses about 40% of his health to one piercing arrow. That champion's pretty good. Yeah, no kidding. I mean, when you have full lethality versus full lethality, whoever hits the other person first dies. It turns out when you have, uh, you know, 1100 range-ish. Plus... Ooh, this is risky though. P1 is going for the Baron. TP's coming in from both sides. Flyquest must stop this. Gonna get the camp jack perhaps here. Altec looking to get aggressive balls. Trying to find something as high and Inori gonna find Altec blowing up already. That's a second kill action onto Inori. I got one. Because they managed to get it, now Zig Throwing it up again. Bolt is really tanky. Arrow needs to find that squishy target, but oh, oh that body slam from Zig. Arrow. A double kill for the Varus, and P1 saved the Baron. Zig is gonna be able to go to the Baron right back to it. He body slammed high out of his distortion, stopping the damage, locking him down, and winning them that fight. Not sure if it was intentional, but either way, that was a big turn. It's just a rough time for the Blanc here in this game, constantly getting poked. A good bevy of hard CC to really yeah. lock you out of your mobility. I mean, P1 will pull off the Baron, but they got some extra kills on FlyQuest. They're defending by throwing themselves at the enemy and getting themselves killed. And it's yep. delaying a lot of these objectives, but it's still giving P1 an advantage. And at some point, you just lose everything in these situations. Exactly. And P1 wants to fight them, right? They want these grouped up uh, fights and the exhaust onto all attack. Everyone piles in. And this was actually looking like a pretty decent 2v3 from FlyQuest. They played it very well. But watch this. Flash in, body slam immediately. That looks pretty intentional. Uh, he does knock him right out of the distortion, stopping the damage, locking him down, and, and that wins up the fight very hard. Well, another Drake is up, and this time it's the Infernal Drake. P1 would love to add that to their collection, as if Arrow wasn't doing enough already, with three completed damage items and halves of two more. Arrow is approaching Kubo quickly. That's a good lockup. Ryu gets the next kill. Redemption down for a bit of extra. Altec caught by a Strangling Roots. Has to flash away, but the Realm Mob's gonna follow in. Ryu wants to go for it. Seek flat body slam finds Altec. Bolt gets collected as well. He's also snared up by Ryze. Adrian's gonna fall the high on the other side, but Bolt is gonna be turret type. Ryu, his fifth kill of the game. P1 are just starting to slaughter FlyQuest. They really are three for one trade. They're shoving down mid lane. Not much hope of Moon and High stopping this from being an inhibitor. They're trying to clear out the waves, but Zig can even just tank up the turret, and this is going to go down very quickly. Yeah, High to the side lane. He knows that turret is gone, and the inhibitor is gone as well. Inhib is going to fall, and they might even get the Drake on the back end of the play. Phoenix One just forcing FlyQuest into bad situations and winning every single time. FlyQuest are so good at clutching out team fights, but P1 have played excellently together. Here's another attempt. High, that's his illusion. Looks for another. He finds Zeke. Does not want to go back in on that guy. Looks for another chain. Doesn't quite land it. And P1 again sticking together, making sure nothing bad happens on the exit. And they are going to run back towards the Infernal Drake here. Might as well take it. What are FlyQuest going to do? Fight you? 
Yeah, there's just not much they can do in these big fights. And now they're going to try to make a risky call. Rush to the Baron. See if they can get this down. There's no vision on it. Uh, will P1 respect the chances that it... Yeah, they're pinging over to it, but they are moving a little bit slow. There's not a lot of DPS, unfortunately, as Altec wasn't here yet. It looks like they should be able to arrive in time. Unavolved Q feels bad as well, perhaps. They're just going to go for it. Yeah, they have to try and go for the 50-50. It's a little lopsided elimination almost down. Baron does go to fly quest, but can they get out? Altec in trouble. Sniped again by Arrow as Zig is looking for stragglers. Hi, going to pop the empowered recall. Zig, can he catch one? Does actually cancel two recalls. Blind throwing out the barrel. Moon leaps himself out to safety. And now it's oh, just no, as us. The he's dead as well. Arrow goes legendary. Gary. And that, P1 might push to end it. Yeah, that could be the game now with balls down so hard for High and Moon to defend this a 2v5. They really could have used that tank and they are pushing in. Nice job by Moon. He's actually cutting the wave, pulling it away. So they have no minions there. The damage reduction is on the turret. That delayed a lot and then may give enough time for people to respawn. Elimination's almost up. I also making the play. Nori tanking a little bit. No, it's actually the minions that are climbing now. First one falls down. Redemption in. Last stand perhaps is there. The shutdown. They fight the arrow. Moon though gets exhausted and chased down under his own turret. Should fall here and does. Nori collects that one. The GA's popped for Zig as well though. Flyquest has actually held down. They may get another kill here. I that was that one. so well done by Moon. A lot of credit deserves to be given to him there. That minion cut, the wave cut there, saved their game. Well, still up for FlyQuest. I don't think anyone has Baron anymore. But P1, they have to back out. They cannot end the game from that particular push. So alive for now, but yeah, it's looking bad. Oh yeah, it, it is looking bad, but that definitely could have been game. So they do hang on and they give themselves a chance, right? Uh, the shutdown gold. Finally given over to Moon, so Moon gonna have a, that injection of gold and Arrow finally does die in one of these fights because of this. So pulling the minions away means that there is the backdoor protection on the turret. Has massively more armor and MR. Uh, they also are taking a lot of damage, trying to tank that up and still get down. This gives High the chance to get in there and get some damage done. And then Moon, as Elimination respawns, knows he can look for Arrow, who's already chunked low, flashes, jumps in on him, takes him out. Nice job there by Moon. And they end up even trading uh, trading the kills here as they do pick up Zig too. Well, let's have a quick check. He does have the Evolved Q. Didn't go for the R that we did see from SOFM yep. out in the LPL. Not sure if he had it in the Baron fight. That might have explained some of the DPS, but couldn't check. Couldn't quite see if he was level 16 or not. Regardless, Moon still doing good damage on the Kha'Zix. Does get a nice snipe and shut down Arrow, who was 12 kills without a death until that point. 12, 1, and 8 out of 21 kills. Not a bad game. Still good. As it turns out, seems good. Seems very good. As P1 looking for another siege here. Arrow is, yeah, full build. Yeah, we've been so for a couple minutes, and yeah, that's the problem. Yeah, that is a problem. And, and just look at the 80 carries. Compare the two. Almost 5,000 gold ahead for Arrow. You know, there is, there is not even two full items. At, it's more than two full items ahead. Yeah. I guess one and three quarters, whatever you want to call it. But uh, a lot. Voltec has a lot to, to complete here and, and is so much weaker than Arrow. And in almost any other game, Altec would actually be in a perfectly fine position. But Arrow is so snowballed in this game that he's accelerated his build and it's very cost efficient. So can't fault Altec for like getting that far behind. But oh. I think Arrow's just been playing amazing. And now Ryu is going to get Dove on Flyquest. They're trying something Moves here. Back. Does have a good flank. Looking to poke in. High trying to find a Nori ball. Still locks up. Three man knock from the arcane smash is good. And Ball is still moving forward. He seems like Moon's going to jump in. Moon's going to in. There's the reset number one. Finds Arrow for the kill and leaps his way out. Doesn't have a lot of wings, but Ball's they reversed. They keep chasing. This isn't going to stop. Off. He's a cancer. Oh, they get out. Adrian still alive. High can chase forever. He keeps the sorting forward. They're going to keep looking for it. Good song is Adrian. How did you afford that item? Altec blows him up and High does get himself back. They're going to get safety. everyone. Sick down as well. FlyQuest, three kills, saving themselves the game. Wow, what a flight from FlyQuest. That was just beautiful. As balls, no one could deal with them. Yes, you have this incredible poke build uh, from Arrow, but they did not have the damage to actually take down balls. Moon, so patient on the side. FlyQuest, that was an amazing fight. And that's the thing. They seem to slick such a clutch team time and time again. They're able to find situations that look very unwinnable and find the one way to win it. And here it is. And High wanted to flash and get a chance. He realized, whoops, a little bit out of range there. Goes back, but the fight has already started well. And Moon on the side here, slowing down his opponents, poking them out, not over committing. Waits until Arrow and Adrian are low and then sees his opportunity right here as Balls goes back in. 
jumps in, gets the kill, gets out. The GA pop there from Balls, but he can just keep going. A high at this point has enough CDR, has enough damage, and he can continuously distort forward, continuously look for this damage. They're able to pick up another kill, and honestly, Ryu and Zig should have just left their, their support at that point. There's no reason to go back for that as Zig. No chance that a summonless support is going to get out coming out of the zone. Yeah, I mean, Adrian did delay it a bit there, which was nice and tricked me with that defensive item. But FlyQuest technically up in the Baron Power play. Almost two and a half thousand gold. I also really like the Hall. Uh, High actually picked up a Banshee's Veil here, right? So you don't need to go pure damage. He knows if he goes in and gets CC'd once, that can just mean he dies. So the Banshee's Veil is ridiculously effective for that, and is even just gonna help him out as far as dueling and poke and things like that. So I think it's a very smart buy. He can still do effective damage, but he needs to be able to stay alive, and I, I think it's super intelligent. Well, Flyquest like have the mid inhibitor back up here. Elder Dragon spawning for the first time in the game in about five seconds. Baron up in a minute 20, and Moon has been sitting there for a long time. Yeah. Trying to get a flank around on the P1. Arrow gonna keep firing away, but Balls is the one man he doesn't want to hit. They're gonna be going to the, towards the Elder They're Dragon. In. Maybe. This is a really important fight here. This could decide the game. Uh, if FlyQuest loses a fight badly, the game just ends. Uh, and if they win this fight and get the Elder Dragon, it could be huge. A uh, high is lurking behind them. He's gonna be looking for Adrian. He's gonna look for the pump. How did he get that? Oh, oh, he's he's locked up. Ryu having to take him down. Disaster. Balls in the front line, but he's just eating too much CC. Don't do a lot of it though and finds Adrian, but Altec can't get in there as it's been ulti by Arrow. Still fighting away. FlyQuest need to find the assassinations and already goes down. 4v4 fight as Altec still firing away. Lemonation has to run away oh. from the snares of the rise. Interesting trade. Yeah, no kidding. It started off looking so bad for FlyQuest as High got rooted up there, does get taken down, and Adrian survived. And now they're trying to catch him out with this Realm Warp. Looks like Lemon Nation. <laughs> oh, has he, has he evaded them? I think he has. I think so. Bamboozles P1. Manages, Bamboozled him. Manages to walk away, find a brush to maybe recall in. Gonna get back home safely. What a player. So we'll reset again. Moon actually oh. eating damage. Arrow is, again, still problematic. That ar arrow is so hard to assassinate for high, too, because he has the Maw plus uh, the Edge of Night, right? So he has a Spell Shield and then the actual just damage absorb shield. Uh, but I can't believe that Balls was able to survive in that fight. That was actually insane. I mean, that's the thing. Maokai is really showing up why he's the premier tank in team fights. Yep. If he can lock down the carries, tie up Arrow and let maybe Moon or High get in and assassinate yeah. him eventually. That's how FlyQuest are starting to turn these fights around. Exactly. And unless Zig can actually get a really effective Dragus ultimate, either separate the team or knock in the carry and get an instant kill like that, Dragus just isn't as strong as the Maokai in the straight up fight, right? A lot of his power is into kind of the playmaking ability, the separation and things like this. And and more and more time is passing, so Altec is catching up. He finished a full Lord Dominix now. He can actually start punching through the tanks and doing a lot more damage. And once he finishes that last item, who cares? Arrow could be 10,000 gold ahead. They'll be on pretty even terms. All right, maybe a trade starting here. Elder Dragon started by FlyQuest P1 running to Baron. This is actually going to be so good for, for FlyQuest, I do think, because as they get the Elder, if the Baron is not already dead, which it may be, they can actually fight into their opponents with this True damage burn. They're gonna try it. They've got a couple already. No, he Baron needs goes to down. Run now. If they delay the recalls and, and get them crapped into a fight into the Elder Dragon, uh, FlyQuest will slaughter them. Well, FlyQuest only have one turret, so they're gonna work on that first. Mid to outer turret finally make falls down. Baron Buff's gonna make the push a little more problematic. But FlyQuest opening up a bit more space. Still down. But it's starting to matter less and less. So 42 minutes into a game that looked like 10 minutes ago was already over in yeah. favor of P1. But FlyQuest, that one hold that you mentioned when Moon pulled a creep wave and some really strong team fights are turning this one slowly back around. And we're getting to a point where FlyQuest, who looked completely out of this game, are maybe one fight away from actually winning it. Yeah, and 80k is kind of the benchmark generally speaking, that you say gold leads do not really matter anymore. Uh, once you're both around that mark, you pretty much have all the items you would you would want, and it gets a lot harder uh, to really do much with that. And you can see you know, there's 2,500 extra gold sitting on Arrow that he can't spend right now unless he wants to sell boots or change up his build. So you can take another 2.5k out of that gold lead, and that doesn't really matter either. Uh, FlyQuest is right in there. Obviously, there's still a very powerful team fight team from P1. And one of the things to track here is that P1 is going to want to wait out the Elder Dragon, and then with the last moments of, of their Baron buff, you know, the minute or so extra that it lasts, they will try to get as much possibly done as they can, because they don't want to fight into the Elder Dragon. It's a shorter buff, but it's more powerful. You can see FlyQuest uh, 
Just trying to set something up, hoping someone missed positions, but P1 continuing to stick together, just play the waves and be defensive when appropriate. High is trimming side waves, side lane, side waves, excuse me, in the top lane. <laughs> Does get that pushing away, and again, just trying to buy more time for his team. Yep. Mid and hip is still exposed, so P1 have an obvious point of attack. And also bottom lane looks to be pushing out for them as well. Pretty heavily is high. It's actually going down to address that wave of minions as well. And not too much left on that Elder Dragon now. It's getting down to kind of the last uh, 10, 20 percent of this buff. It's going to expire on the next wave or two, and that is why P1 is in position. They want to be up here and ready to go. As soon as that expires, that's when they will start to push forward pretty aggressively. But they still have to be careful that they don't get hard engaged on with the last couple seconds of that buff. And Moon with the Dust Blade has actually been looking for a flank at every possible moment. He knows if he can get onto a squishy target at an opportune time, that could turn the fight around. So. I love watching the Kha'Zix oh, yeah. players intelligently find spaces in team fights, although Arrow sniffs him out and shoots him for about 35% of his health. <laughs> and so much of Kha'Zix in the late game is patience and finding the right opportunity. If you jump in, you can be a hero or a zero very easily. And High is lurking once again here. Moon has healed up and returned. They can look for a fight, but this is risky. Speaking of heroes, High made so many plays in his time. Can he make another one? P1 can't see him, but they might wonder where he is. He's actually found Ryu. Chain's gonna land. Nice damage. Moon gonna get his uh, shield poked off by the Prey Seeker. Zig also took damage at the start of that fight. And FlyQuest will be happy to just make them back off and have that Baron buff expire. But look at that poke onto Altec. He is almost out of the fight entirely. Uh, this should signify P1 moving in and getting an inhibitor. And the Fly pick the moment to fight now. No, they don't. Baron buff no, still there. Not really worth defending the inhibitor at this stage. They can't lose any more balls, taking some damage, but P1 know that they can't overstay their welcome. Top wave's causing problems. Moon looks for another flank, but isn't going to find it. And we'll reset the map once again. This game is getting real tense. I think it was intelligently played by both sides. Uh, P1 utilizes their window where the Baron buff kind of ex lasted longer uh, than the Elder Dragon to get themselves an inhibitor. And, and for, for FlyQuest, there was no reason to fight over that. One inhibitor down at 45 minutes does not really change the fate of the game whatsoever, but Altec fighting at 40% HP would have changed how the game goes, right? If your AD carry dies there, it can be uh, the end of it. And he's also going to be getting pretty close to finishing up that last item. You know, he's 2,500 gold in his pocket. Once he has that Mercurial, he's going to be quite a bit stronger. There it is, six item build. So it doesn't matter now that Arrow has been six items for, what, 15 minutes longer? They're on even terms. You can see, again, support optimization built up as well. Adrian, good damage, but huge amount of healing. is actually a death cap for high. That's a big boost, out. too. That, I mean, he's now full build. Yeah, exactly. And and this version of LeBlanc can actually take down frontliners pretty well. You can control them with those chains, and you can actually do a fair bit of damage to them. So it's not something where you can only go for squishies. You can participate in team fights very well with your CC, distorting forward, rooting up the tanks, and holding them in place and dealing damage to them while you know the Ezreal and the Maokai punch away on them. And, and Moon is always going to be lurking, looking for those flanks. Ooh, Trim doesn't quite catch the whole wave. Gets a couple of caster creeps in the back. You can see again. Teams are just kind of trading side lane pressure. Big wave bottom for Fly, but big wave top for P1. That's going to start mounting for them. So Fly, do the smart thing, shove down mid, get the supers as far back to the middle of the map as they can, and then just buy more time. That's all they yeah. really need. Baron's going to be up in now just two minutes. Elder Dragon's got five, six minutes maybe until it's going to spawn, as that is a much longer respawn time, of course. But P1 starting another assault. And the big issue for them has been they've had the poke, they've got the team comp, but they have not found a real opportunity to just break open the game and end it. Yeah. And FlyQuest have been holding on. Their tenacity must be uh, must be applauded here. It certainly must. It's, it's just tough. I mean, unless Zig gets that great alt, how do you really lock them into a a fight that's, that's going to be good for you. And Inori needs to be careful. Ooh, chunked out. 600. Oh, yeah, maybe going down. Could be a kill, Inori. Oh, no. He's going to go down. Stranglethorn's going to zone off the rest of them, but he's chunked out so low. And now High and Moon going to look to chase it down. Zig actually locked up, and he's going to get himself caught out. The Squishies are getting zoned here, and Zig Fly with the GA. Is going to keep chasing forever. They will never stop this chase. Chain for Zig. Going to force a flash. Inori low. Moon again looking for another flank. He almost got spotted. He's just slowing them. And that Altec with an ult as well, gonna cancel some recalls. Moon's still gonna look to poke them down. FlyQuest by time. Good Scry's Bloom to reveal them off as well, but can't force a kill. Supers in the mid are causing problems. That was a pretty rough ultimate there from Minori. Right into the team, cost his flash. Uh, cost Zig his flash, and could have cost them a lot more. Uh, those super minions are really the only reason they had to actually give up that chase. Moon was doing a good job slowing down the team, and 
they will eventually back off. So disaster averted, but more time bought here uh, for FlyQuest. As, you know, even Balls, 0, 5, and 6 is almost full build now, right? These guys really are pretty close to, to finishing out everything. And it'll be interesting to compare the kind of differences in power between the supports as well. Lemonation very much playing a force multiplier. Shield your teammates, heal them, uh, give them additional attack speed with the Arden Sensor. Whereas Adrian himself, getting further and further into the game, becomes much more of just an extra mid lane. This guy ends up doing a ton of damage. He needs to pick up a couple more items to really get there, but still, not something to be overlooked. Well, Baron up in two seconds. Flank. Two double flanks again. Ryu getting caught. Adrian actually the target. I think that might have been... That was the real high, and actually Ball's going back in. There's actual high once again. Gonna dodge back in. Zig misses his ultimate ball. Staying alive forever. There's so much healing in Baron. Fighting it. No, he has to flash away, but Zig's gonna lose his GA. Adrian goes down to Balls. GA pops on both sides here as High gets exhausted. They need to keep protecting their carries. Moon wants to book them away. Realm of needs to be cancelled. High doesn't quite get it done, and a few make it out alive. And Nori All still eating to go Poke. aggressive. The arrow's looking good. There's Poke again from Moon. P1 just have no health left to play with, but they're still getting out. They got chunked, and that could be Baron. It is going to be Baron. I mean, the ultimate is up for, B for P1 uh, on Inori, so he can come back. And there is a TP for Zig. I don't know that they can actually get here in time, even if they want to try. But we'll see if they go for it. Damage is massive. It's already dead. Absolutely yeah. no chance as FlyQuest take Baron for the first Woo. time in the game. We're still going almost 50 minutes in. What a roller coaster of a game. This one. Very likely it may come down to just one fight. And as always, High lurking on the side here, wants to go in, tries to chunk out. Adrian immediately jumps back as he sees Ryu looking for that root, and the exhaust is baited out. A nice disengage from Adrian with that kind of zone control of his ultimate, but it's Moon on the side, waiting, jumps in. Actually, doesn't even get his Q off there. It's a bit of a, a mistake, but still, the fight ends up going FlyQuest's way. You can see how well they're kiting back and forth, sped up by Lemonation. And they do end up getting that Baron. This is the assumed power. Level. Yeah, this is going to be some big damage as far as structures go. Four turrets off for FlyQuest, still trailing by quite a number. But like we said, if they can get them eventually, that's going to be good for them. I didn't mean eventually it's this late, but <laughs> it's working out for them regardless. And I'll have Baron Bar for a couple minutes here. See if they can't break the base. The bot wave is pushing. Top wave is building up for a push. So they have stacked up their waves very well. High can go down here. This is going to be a quick, easy turret. Enough gold on balls for him to finish out his build now. So everyone is going to be getting the luxury items at this point. They're picking up potions. If they do, back off. They're pushing in on all sides. You can see how much more aggressive High is willing to be with that Banshee. So just going forward, getting more poke down. And Anori is taking substantial amounts of damage just from the poke here from the Blanc. Double Baron Cannon's going to do some work, being distracted by some plants. Elimination of Ball's going to deal with those, and it's just a bit of patience here from FlyQuest that should see them opening up the base of P1. Yeah, you'd have to think so, but if Arrow can hit enough of those Qs onto the team, poke them out, it's more about actually poking out the enemy champions in, in cases like this than it is about clearing just those waves. If you can damage LeBlanc to get him pretty low, LeBlanc just has to leave, right? You have to try to force the champions to leave rather than just kill minions. We can see both teams kind of moving back and forth, trying to get minions in the right spots. P1 doing a good job defending between mid and bottom lane and actually backing off for the Elder Dragon with the wave crashing top. FlyQuest's gonna pull a bit of an audible perhaps but to try and take this big objective. And, and part of the problem for P1 is they've been locked in their base so long, they don't really have good vision. They don't know where the enemy team is lurking. So they can't just rush out and beat this. That allows FlyQuest uh, just straight up take that dragon down very quickly. But P1 did a good job of defending the base. Uh, they did not lose any inhibitor turrets yet. They even still have one outer up. And uh, they are definitely hanging on. We'll see if FlyQuest can get anything done with the Elder. That's rude. Spots Ryu does <laughs> manage to cancel that recall. Altec just firing it out. I think looking for maybe the wave. But does spot one, and all of a sudden, Baron still on for a little while longer. Elder Dragon going to be up for pretty much the full duration of this next engage. FlyQuest awfully strong. They're going to look to try and end the game. And what 20 minutes ago looked like a clean P1 victory. Yeah. Both teams still holding on to this one. That shows, shows the reason that teams fight it out. And, and these guys are always playing to win. They're always willing to make the risky plays. You know that Baron call that FlyQuest made about 20 minutes ago where they rush out the Baron and they barely get out? If they die there, the game just ends. Ooh. They make the call, and they're still in it. Adrian Forster's on his high. Got a very good amount of damage done. Tart's going down. They've finally broken the base open. And P1 are just running out of room to play with. 
And Ice just still pushing in the bot side. I could be able to crack that pretty easily here too. They are trying to land that poke from Arrow, but he has to be very careful because if Balls can get up on him, he does not really deal with the tanks. He needs to hit the squishies in the background. You can see poke from Flyquist isn't bad either. Double Ocean Drakes with the Elder Dragon helping out. They'll break the inhibitor. They'll back themselves away. No need to overcommit here. Both teams can win a team fight very soundly if people are out of position. But Flyquest have just built up such a substantial amount of gold with this Baron. They're actually ahead in gold now. Not that it really matters at this yeah. point in the game, but it just speaks to how much they've clawed their way back into this game. And they still have like a minute on the Elder Dragon, and that is what is kind of staying P1's hand a lot of the time here, is that they have to be very, very careful about the additional power there. Uh, even just the amplification on that Ocean Dragon gives them ridiculous amounts of regen. I mean, look at the health flooding into Altec. That is disgusting. Yep. Didn't even need the life steal. Just uh, hangs out, gets his health back. Ball still firmly on the front line. Elder is about to end. P1, do they even have the confidence to go for a fight? Because it feels like it's too weak. Yep. High again, poking out whoever he can find. Looks for Anori there for a bit of damage. Anori shrugs it mostly off. Flyquest, I think, realizing that maybe not everything's prepped as nicely as it could be. Top wave looks P1 favored, but tricky to see just from the minimap. And yeah. I think they know that they want to back off, not take a risky situation. They've got supers pushing in. I mean, this game is already 55 minutes long. No reason to not play it a little slow. You've certainly got the time. Yeah. The, the real thing is, pretty much at this stage, when you're 55 minutes in, especially with Amber Terrace broken, but even if they're not, if you lose a bad fight anywhere on the map now, it actually doesn't matter. You will lose the game. Uh, the, the res timer has become so, so long, so if there's any one-sided fight, the game is just done. And that can make teams very hesitant to commit to it. They're always trying to wait for that perfect fight, right? It feels like you've put so much into the game, you've played so long. Uh, and it's it's within your grasp, but it's also very easy to see slip away. You can see the mountain that FlyQuest have gone over in almost a literal stance reflected in the gold grab. P1 built up such a big advantage, but FlyQuest walked all the way up and all the way back down, and now we're at parity. Baron will be back up in a minute five. That's starting to run out of relevance as well. Yeah. I honestly wouldn't mind seeing P1 give more of this farm over to Adrian, let him clear some of the side waves, because he actually still has a lot of room to grow. And as funny as that may sound, you know, if you get Adrian with a Void Staff and a Death Cap, this guy becomes so much stronger. Everyone else on the team has been full build for quite some time, so even just allowing him to pick up some easy side lane farm could be smart, but they're obviously worried about leaving him alone, not having him with the squad. And that is, oh. is understandable. Balls. Again, just posturing so aggressively. High gonna poke again. Banshees goes off. Moon in the back. They're gonna look for something. And already getting chunked. Balls in the front line onto Zig. Maybe a little too deep. High's weaving in, trying to find something. Actually got caught up. High gonna get knocked back there. And now Zig's gonna combo in. But so much healing. Could keep them safe. Moon on the side, waiting for it as Zig. Pulls it back away. Balls is just so strong as High takes out Adrian. Moon just bought enough time. And P1 are down a member. And now another. Zig goes down as well. Balls. Getting the last snipe in the tank v tank battle. 5v3 arrow, gonna get chunked down high. Trying to make a hero play. Moon secures it and FlyQuest are gonna take this one down. 57 minutes in and they'll move in for the kill. What a comeback. FlyQuest refused to go down. Battle back and they are gonna be the ones taking game one. Insane amounts of grit and tenacity. FlyQuest take down the first Nexus. What a comeback to be up 1-0 versus Phoenix 1. Doesn't even win them the series, it just starts it off for them. Never say die, Phase 3. They hung around for so long and they were always looking to make the winning play. They were not just trying to play it slow. They're always looking for plays. They're playing it aggressively. And honestly, that was an insane game. A lot of credit has to go to Moon 11, 3, and 8 on the Kha'Zix. Uh, this guy, once again, you give him the priority pick, he shows up. A tough one for Arrow, as, as he had an incredible game himself, especially in the early stages, was ridiculously far ahead. I have to say, though, it's kind of funny that we mentioned it with Balls, because they're like, hey, this guy maybe falls behind a little in lane, but yeah. gets super tanky and is relevant at all points. He was very relevant in the late game. He, he surely wasn't. And I honestly kind of wonder for Arrow, 
would it not have been worth swapping over to an auto attack centric build that late in the game where you cannot ever really kill off the Maokai? You know, maybe he should have actually started swapping out items like the Ghost Blade and moving into IE and, and more auto attack fa focused stuff. Well, in the super late game, it can be tough, but instead we'll let someone else take care of it. For a deeper dive into that game, let's check in with our analysts. Thank you very much, gentlemen. FlyQuest secures the victory in a very long game there, but they'll be happy to have picked that one up with how back and forth it was. Right, a lot of these like longer games, you're like, oh, it must have been really slow, not much happening. Tons of kills this game, very active even when there weren't kills going on, so a, a good long game to watch. Very much so, but let's go ahead and take a look at Champion Select here because FlyQuest continuing to intrigue us when it comes to Champion Select, this time opting not to ban that standard LeBlanc on red side and able to secure it seeing as how P1 valued that Varus so highly. I think you see two very different styles coming out here. P1 wanting to play more around Arrow, probably their best uh, player on their team. Similarly, you see FlyQuest targeting High and Moon, getting the advantage in the first draft phase where they get the Kha'Zix and the Blanc in their first rotation. So two very, very different clear strategies, and it came out in the gameplay as well. Yeah, very much so. And then if we go into the game itself, we're looking at these teams actually play around those strategies, right? So often we see teams pick a win condition and then play to something else entirely. Both of these teams did a very good job of focusing in and honing in on how they're supposed to win the game. So what from FlyQuest, we've got visitation to the mid lane from Moon, getting High ahead and allowing him to roam to to the side lanes on the flip side or here it is right now right this is the initial uh first blood basically where you see a three for one going in favor of the side of fly quest and it's a great reaction out of all tech you see him already moving whereas on the flip side arrow's still running down bot lane so you can see that FlyQuest is just so on the same page with what they want to do. They're able to collapse in here, and they were, they were going to get a couple kills in this fight anyways, but then Alltech shows up, and he's the last piece that they need to finish off this three-for-one dive. Arrow shows up too late. Maybe if he's there earlier, he can he can turn this the other way around. And then we see just how good FlyQuest is at pushing their advantages, high picking up a solo kill on Ryu, and it looks like, you know, with this play, things are starting to get out of control. Right, would have normally said that it's about time for them to run away with the game off of that play there. Now this, although not netting a kill, is just another example of how High can take his advantage and extend it to his other laners. He'll force Zig to back just based on the damage he deals. Balls is therefore able to push an entire wave into the turret and have a greater CS lead in that Maokai versus Gragas matchup. Right, and it, like we said, it looks like High is taking over the game. Things are going to get out of control, but then they force a play around mid that is kind of the turning point in the game that hands it back to P1, where this is one of the few times where you can say High and Moon were not quite on the same page. Right, exactly. Here it is. Uh, starting off with those evolved W, the Void Spice for Moon, trying to get that big slow, so less damage coming through, and literally an auto attack away from death here. Right, and it gives just enough time for Arrow and the rest of P1 to collapse and pick up two kills for Arrow. And then once Arrow got these kills, P1 actually played great around on bot lane, forcing dives over and over. Here they get Lemonation. Small misplay by Adrian trading a kill back. Ultimately, it's fine because they get the first turret, and then they're able to flip their bot lane up to the top side following this play. They're able to get a pick off onto balls. So, you know, P1 showing that, hey, if you give us our advantage where we wanted it, we know how to play from ahead like that too. Exactly. A after this play, Arrow's now sitting at 4-0 on this Varus. At one point, uh, up to like 10, 0, and 8 or something yeah, ridiculous. Yeah, build at like, like 32 yeah, minutes. You can see it there, 64k damage coming out of that Varus by the end of the game. Ooh. However, it wasn't enough. And this is the thing, at a certain point, when you get to that six items, it, it, it no longer matters that you had that 10-0 scoreline because everybody's hit the six item mark and now it's about the way we play the team fights. And FlyQuest, High in particular, his play on that LeBlanc makes it such a powerful pick for them in the way he's able to position for assassinations. And not just him, Moon as well, always being on the flanks, making it so it's so difficult for a tank player to, like Zig, to walk up and set his team up for kills because at the same time in the back of your mind, you're always like, well, where are the assassins? So right. we saw all the time Moon on the backside just throwing out that Evolve W constantly poking people low, and if you're not ever grouped up, he's going to go in and finish off your carry. So it was very difficult for P1 to play team fights out, and it was extremely well executed by FlyQuest. Right, Moon picks up player of the game this time around, had the most kills on the team, as you mentioned, positioning, uh, and really, uh, if anything, just causing stress for P1, right? In that situation where you know as you're trying to kite back from a fight that there's this looming Kha'Zix tracking you all the way down across the map, it makes it very hard for Arrow to ever feel comfortable with charging up a Q and standing in one place for more than a second. And at the same time, Balls as well was a huge threat in the team fights where he was constantly soaking damage and when you're getting poked from the backside, this tank's walking in, you're constantly getting pincered. It's so difficult as a carry to play that out and I mean, credit to FlyQuest because they were down a lot and we saw that one huge stand in the top lane that they had and from there they were constantly able to 
not necessarily like win team fights hard, but come out even enough so that they kept stalling, they kept stalling until they finally started winning them. Now, question at the beginning of the day was how good is FlyQuest really? They hadn't played the other three teams in the top four yet. This is the first game of many to come where they're playing against top tier opponents. But they started out in a deficit. I mean, we, we had a couple good plays there in the mid, you know, uh, in the mid lane. But after that, a 6K, 7K gold deficit that they have to macro their way out of. And so at a certain point, we've got to wonder, is FlyQuest going to crumble under these deficits that they keep finding themselves under? And will Phoenix 1 be able to just craft a, a closer to a game, you know, 15 minutes earlier? I actually think this game showed fairly well for FlyQuest. They had the same early game playmaking that we expect out of them. We saw an uncharacteristic mis mistake, because really that, that play, that P1 turn to get the double kill into arrow, was more of a fault of FlyQuest. Mm -hmm. And if they don't make that, maybe High just takes over that game and then they start making their own plays bottom. The fact that those two kills went onto arrow, which gave a ton of pressure up in that lane, was a huge problem. And I mean, P1 looked good, but it looked like FlyQuest, if they didn't give up that small advantage, and they do play fairly loose, yeah. so you know sometimes they get a little crazy, but uh, I think it looked really good for uh, FlyQuest overall. Absolutely. A tight matchup here in Game 1. We're going to step away for a quick break, but when we come back, it's Game 2 between FlyQuest and Phoenix 1. Stay with us. And now we have... Hey, any uh, update on the full moon situation? That's good. Leave it like that. There's a possible lunar eclipse happening. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit. Fuck. Oh, no. This is my time. <laughs> well, Adrian is so squishy at level three high. He wants to do a mid but he gets knocked up. Ryu still doing damage, but Anori goes down. First spot to high. He does die to Ryu, but that's another kill for FlyQuest. Ryu is chained that's there so again. Ryu trying to run him away. He just can't get out at all. Moon, does he want it? I think Kai wants it instead. Heal it from Arrow's gonna save him. Double knock up for the Rek'Sai and P1 turn it around. Israel, 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 Israel. Israel, Israel. Oh, Israel. Okay. Just fight, just fight, help arrow. Oh, watch the block, watch the block. Watch the block, watch the block. Watch the block, watch the block. Just head back, head back. Lebon, 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 Lebon. Nice, nice. High can chase forever. He keeps distorting forward. They're going to keep looking for it. Good song is Adrian heading you for that item. Altec blows him up, and High does get himself back. They're going to get everyone. Take down as well. Blackwest, three kills, saving themselves the game. V tank battle, 5v3. Arrow going to get chunked down. High trying to make a hero play. Moon secures it, and Blackwest are going to take this one down.